everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to Mystical Munchies, featuring the official Halo cookbook. We're starting our new cookbook off, off with the appetizer, chocolate chip scones, after we finished up with the coconut pie in Cooking for Wizards, Warriors, and Dragons last week. As this is another cookbook that's uh, got stories with it, let's tell the story with this one. I'm always a sucker for a good pastry. You can find scones at all the coffee shops across the galaxy, but the ones at Havadi Goodwan are just out of this world. Yes, I know that sounds corny, but it's my book and I'm keeping it. Make them for yourself, then get back to me. You'll understand eventually. Well, what say we find out? Because the ingredients are waiting for us at the table, so let's head in that direction. For this recipe, we're going to need two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a tablespoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a third of a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of brown sugar, half a cup, aka one stick of unsalted butter, cubed and frozen, one and a half cups of chocolate chips, a cup of buttermilk, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a tablespoon of heavy cream, and some turbinado sugar. This is the first time I've ever worked with this in, the, in my career on Mystical Munchies. So with all the ingredients set up, now let's move into the kitchen and start putting this recipe together. You're probably going to hear the oven chirping a little bit in the background. I'm bringing the temperature for that up to 375. So that's already preheating. We've got our large bowl and shot because we're going to use this to combine the flour, baking powder, salt, cinnamon, sugar, and light brown sugar. So let's start off with that. First, we've got our flour. We need to get to two and a quarter cups. And I've got my three quarter cup measuring cup right here. So hopefully we've got enough in the canister. If not, I do have more up top. So one, two, And three, we should just, we should just make it. So we'll pour that in, and we'll give it a little more out of the canister. Not too much, though. That'll work. That can go back up. I'll need to pour more of the flour in next time I need to use it. But we can cross that bridge when we come to it. So there's the flour. The baking powder, we need a tablespoon of this. Okay. That can head toward the dishes as well. The baking powder can go back up. A teaspoon of salt. We'll need a teaspoon somewhere else, I'm pretty sure, so I'm gonna move that back toward the table. Half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, which I've got right here. I've only got a quarter teaspoon, but since multiplying fractions is a thing, I can just use this twice to get to the half a teaspoon that I need. And the cinnamon can go back up as well. Then we want our third cup of sugar. That can go to the dishes. There's our third cup of sugar going in. We'll need that third cup of container for anything else. And then two tablespoons of light brown sugar. I had to break it up a little bit because it was clumping on me. But not too bad. Okay, there's our two tablespoons of light brown sugar. That can also go toward the dishes. Let me see if I can close this brown sugar up a bit more. There we go. Seal most of the air out of that. Okay. 
Okay. That can go back up as well. Now we're going to mix this all up. I'm going to try to break up some of that brown sugar. It was still, even coming out of there, it was still a little bit clumped up, but not too, not too terribly bad. Keep the bowl mostly front and center. Okay, I think that's pretty well mixed up. I'll give my hands a quick wash. I mostly do that before I go to handle new stuff. But what we're going to be doing here is now we're going to bring the butter in until it resembles coarse meal. I've got the butter that's been sitting in the freezer. Well, actually, it's been sitting out, but it was in the freezer last night. And actually, I'm going to grab a wooden spoon for this. We'll mix that up. Probably should have thought a little bit more, but it's probably fine here. Okay. All right, that looks all good there. Now we want to add the chocolate chips and toss to combine. So we need so we need a cup and a half of the chocolate chips, which I've got right here. I will of course have to slice these open. Fortunately, I keep a pair of scissors in the kitchen. One. Ooh. Easy does it. Two. I'm not going to just empty this whole thing, am I? Not quite, but I'm going to come close. Well, maybe I am. Not quite, but... Eh. F it. Close enough that I will just go ahead and empty the whole thing in there. There'll be a little extra chocolatey, but oh well. I'm sure almost nobody will be heartbroken by something being a little extra chocolatey, unless maybe you're allergic to chocolate or something, which is entirely possible. So now we're going to give that a quick mix-up. They say toss it to combine, but I think this will work just fine. This will definitely work just fine for my purposes. Okay, I think we're pretty much all good there. So now we can bring this to the side and we'll bring our bring a smaller bowl in shot. We've got a small bowl in shot because now we're going to combine the buttermilk and the vanilla extract. So we've got our buttermilk right here. We need a cup of this. I'm just giving it a good shake. We would get that open. Pour that there. The rest of that can hit the fridge. And then what was it, a teaspoon of vanilla extract? Yes. Which once again, I've got my half teaspoon here, but I can just use that twice to get to my full teaspoon. That's a little bit more than a teaspoon, but it's not the first time I've taken liberties with ingredient counts on Mystical Munchies, and I'm sure it won't be the last. Give that a quick wipe. The vanilla extract can also go up. I said up, not into the flour mixture. There we go. 
mind that. Whoa. Well, in better news, the oven just came to temperature. Just giving my hands a quick wash. I don't think we're gonna be combining this for too long, though. Actually, let me give the side of that bowl a little quick wipe down. I don't like how it's dripping. Just make sure we get that covered. I think we're all good with that. Like I said, I wasn't going to be combining that very much. So now, now we need the flour mixture back in shop. So now we're going to combine the buttermilk mixture into the flour. We're going to mix everything to combine it together, but I don't want to overwork it. Let me get a spatula here. See if I can scoop, scrape most of this out. All right. I'll move there. Now I'll combine this, but again, I don't want to overwork it. I have a feeling I'm going to need to add more buttermilk to this. Although that kind of brings us to the danger of not wanting to overwork it. Well, I think that's as combined as everything is going to get. I'm going to grab a... move the camera just a bit so I can grab a spoon to try to scrape some of this out. Just trying to make sure I get more of this more of the flour mixture in into the main part of the into the main part of the batter here. Okay. That is going to have a hard time forming into the disc that we're eventually going to need. But I think that's probably about as much as I want to work it together. So now we're going to move to... Now we're going to move to the next shot. Our next order of business is going to be to take this clump of dough, which probably needed more buttermilk now that I look at it, and see if we can't form that into something resembling a coherent 8-inch disc. So this is going to be fun. I'm not going to get a measuring tape out and measure this out perfectly. But I do want it to be somewhat, I do want it to be something resembling a disc. Plus for what little, the little flour residue that I'm going to end up having, it'll be easy enough to take a dish, dish rag once I start washing the dishes up and cleaning it that way. But actually, I think this is holding, for the most part, pretty well. Okay, it's not quite an, it's not quite an eight inch disc, but I think we can work with it. 
Seems like it's mostly going to hold together for me. At least hopefully it will. So I think now that we've got that pressed together, again, as good as it's probably going to get, Let's see if I can press that chocolate chip back in there. Let's see. Yep, we are going to be cutting that now, so I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Grab a knife. So we can cut this into eight roughly equal portions. Yes, we're going to get my arm in shot. No, I can't help it at this point. Okay. Almost looks like a dessert pizza in a way. We have to press a little bit of this back together, but I can deal with that. While trying to keep the portions mostly separated, okay? I think that'll work for us there. Okay, now we're gonna move back over to the table because I don't wanna disrupt this. We're gonna move back over to the table for a minute while we get the next, while we get the baking apparatus ready. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to prepare our baking sheet with cooking spray and parchment paper. So I'm going to spray the cooking, sh the cooking sheet. Being cautious because apparently cooking spray vapor is a thing as I discovered a while back. And then we're going to cover that with parchment paper. I was going to say, then, oh, that's the end of that parchment paper. I was going to say, then I'm going to cuss and swear because I can't cut the parchment paper, but it's hard to cut it when that's the end of the parchment paper. So the parchment paper container can hit the thin, and then we'll move this back into the kitchen. Now we're going to move the scones from the countertop. And hopefully this spatula will work for what I need it for. I may have to put some of these back together. I'm probably going to need a bigger baking sheet is what I'm probably going to need. Yeah, I'm going to need a... I'm going to need a... Big, another baking sheet, so let me get another one prepared here. Hang on just a second, this won't take long. Good thing I didn't put the cooking spray back up. Let me go grab my other box of parchment paper. I'm going to go ahead and prepare this off shot. All right. There we go. The joys of mystical munchies, having to open a brand new tube of parchment paper. Get in there. Okay. 
here we are. Okay. I'll move this out of the way for the time being. And I'll bring the other one in while I put the other the rest of the scones on there. Trying to keep them together as much as I can. Well, to keep them together until they get to the baking sheet, then I'll separate them so they can so they don't fuse while they're baking. At least that's the plan. Okay. Try to get some of these chocolate chips back in. And again, not keep the not let the scones fall apart on me, which some of them are, but can't help that completely. Okay, that's not bad-ish. Okay, I think that's probably the best we're going to do there. So, I'll scrape the, I'll do a little bit of cleanup in on the countertop. Probably could have put down like a work surface just to make this a little easier, but I'm going to be washing dishes here very shortly, so I'm not too, I'm not too worried about it. I just want to do a little bit of obvious cleanup if I can. Okay. That'll help. So, tablespoon of heavy cream. Okay. So now we're going to prepare the brushing. So I've got a, right here turning around in the kitchen here, making myself dizzy in the process. What fun. Anyway, what do I have left for tablespoon? Actually, three teaspoons to a tablespoon should be fine. Yes. All right, so I've got my heavy cream right here. I believe it opens on this side, I think. It's like these, this is like one of those milk cartons in school that I haven't had to worry about in years and years. Actually, it looks like it's folded here, so I think it opens on this side. There we go. Okay. Whoa! That's a lot more than... That's going to be a lot more than a tablespoon, but oh well. Okay. Okay, that can go back in the fridge, and now we're going to start brushing the scones with the with the heavy cream. I'm pretty. I think this brush, this brush that I'm using, actually came with the tart pans that I picked up that I was going to use for the runaway fruit tarts last week, but I couldn't find the ingredient. It was the I think it was the apricots that I needed for the for the tarts, but I couldn't find them anywhere locally. So that's why I ended up audibling to the coconut pie. I do still want to try those fruit tarts at some point, just to cross that off the bucket list and be like, hey, I made, and be like, hey, I made fruit tarts at some point, or some kind of tart. Now I need to go grab the other batch of scones. We'll move over to the countertop so we can brush these. Probably gonna have to spread. I'm probably just gonna have to pour a little bit of this out, brush it around. Trying not to get them too wet, obviously. That'll be helpful for some of these scones that came a little bit more apart as I was transferring them from the countertop to. 
to the stove, or to the, to the, from the countertop to the pan, or to the baking sheet. And then that can go there, and that can go toward the dishes. Now we want to take the turbinado, which all this is, is just raw cane sugar. So we're going to sprinkle that over the, this is not broken up at all. We'll see what we can sprinkle over the, over the scones. Not freaking much, obviously. Let's see if I can get in there and break it up a little bit. And that spoke isn't, that spout isn't really holding together either, which is not helpful. All right, I think we're going to try an easier solution for this. I'm just going to try to come at it from over the top. We'll see how this works for us. <sighs> the only thing I don't like about doing it this way, well, I can just grab a, I can grab a, oh, that's going to be a problem. That is giantly clumped. Whoa. Well, there's got to be some other way that I can break this up. Didn't I have a... I had a meat tenderizer mallet that I had to use for... That I, that I had to use for a recipe of mystical munchies a while back. Let me see if that helps me break this up at all. It's going to make a little bit of a mess, but... I'm going to do something to try to help me break this up a little bit. Actually, I'm going to break this over the sink. I'm also going to turn the camera off while I do this, so bear with me for a few minutes. Now that we've got much less clumpage on the cane sugar, now we can take this and sprinkle it over the scones. I'll just grab a handful here. It's going to be, it's not exactly as sprinkled as I would like, but more like saturated in sugar, but beggars can't be choosers at this point. At least it's broken up enough that I can do it like this. I'm going to do the other ones over the countertop. Trying to sprinkle it over the stove is a really stupid idea because I don't want anything getting in the burners. Well, more than already has incidentally. But I don't want to pour gasoline on that fire. Thank you very much. So. Okay. Give that third one from the... That second one from the right a little bit more. Okay. All right, I'll give my hands a quick wash. Okay. And then we're going to bake these for 25 to 30 minutes until golden brown. So, I'm going to put these in the oven. Good thing I also moved the camera out of the way of the count of the oven, so hopefully I can fit these in nice and easy. Maybe I'll, I'm going to move the camera just a little more so I can make sure that nothing crazy happens with the oven. Then I'll set a timer for 30 minutes, and we'll... Okay, yep, that is set. So now we'll come back in about 30 minutes to take, our look, to take a look at the finished product as it comes out of the oven. The scones look great coming out of the oven. I was also giving them a little bit of time to cool down because I didn't want to handle scorching hot scones fresh out of the oven. I was also getting a couple more videos that I'm going to be making today ready 
but you'll have to stay tuned to the channel to see what those videos are coming up. So, really coming back to Mystical Munchies, I'm going to plate one of these scones, and I'll meet you guys back at my desk for the taste test. I've got one of the scones right here. It actually seemed to come together very nicely in the oven. So the fork is probably a little bit of overkill. I honestly could probably grab hold of this and just eat it that way, but I'm going to test out using a fork first. So let's give this a taste and see what I think. Definitely came together nicely. So bon appetit. These are basically glorified chocolate chip cookies with a lot more effort, but they still came out really good. The, the outer shell essentially was a little bit hard. I think that was because I put it in the oven for the longer length of time. But the inside turned out nice and moist. And like I said, I probably didn't need the fork for this, but I felt a little bit better using the fork, so it actually held together a little bit better. But that's another episode of Mystical Munchies in the books. Next week, we're going to be making the side sweet potato fries. As for the games, tomorrow we're playing Appa Hockey, and Wednesday we're going to be playing debuting all-time wrestling. Like I said, I have a couple of bit more videos lined up for today, but you'll have to stay tuned to the channel and see what those are. Thank you for watching this video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care, everyone.